Hi, my name is Martin Serrano. I'm one of the chief architects at Ativio, and I'm here to talk to you today about connectors and workflows. So you've been hearing uh, earlier about uh, unified information access and all the wonderful things it will bring to your life, and, uh, but it's not any good if you can't get data into the system. So connectors are the primary way users will be getting data into our system. Now, Atevio provides a variety of connectors from traditional database type sources, uh, from sources like email systems like Exchange, from uh, file systems, and from other types of systems like CMS systems like SharePoint, etc. Once data is extracted from a connector, the place that it goes to is into a workflow within Ativio. Now workflows are a way of decomposing a data processing problem into a series of stages. So what I've drawn here is three stages. Imagine content coming in from a connector, going through a series of data processing steps, and then finally ending up in our index. So a common problem that we solve uh, when processing content is called text extraction. Now text extraction is a job of looking at a document or some content coming in and extracting all the text that comes that's uh, contained within it. Now uh, there's many different types of text files and, and content that come into the system such as PDFs, docs, etc. So I'll just concentrate on say uh, a particular kind to start with say a PDF. So content comes in, it's pre-processed, PDF, out comes text, and thus into the index. Now one of the issues is you may have many different types of data formats coming in. So one of the powers of the workflow uh, concept that we have with, with AIE is the ability to split your processing path into different uh, stages or different sub-workflows depending on the content that's coming in. So say you know, this shows a specialized component uh, that can, knows how to process PDFs. But say you also uh, might be getting a JPEG coming in. So you need something that can process a JPEG. Well, rather than having one large, very complex piece of software that knows how to handle every type of content that you could imagine and uh, has associated with problems with having to be able to handle every different kind of content, with the Tivio, you can use a splitter that can look at the incoming content and then split it out based on its type. So here I'm drawing another one, say Word Docs, and some other type. And depending on that content, they're split out into a separate data processing stage. And when that's finished, they rejoin back. That's a powerful concept in itself. But say out of this file system comes a zip file. This is where you really start to use some of the advantages of the workflow system that we have with AIE. We can have a specialized uh, data processing stage that knows how to handle zip files. But what's a zip file contain? A bunch of other different types of files. Many, many different types. Instead of re, uh, rewriting this whole system on how to handle uh, the content coming out of the zip file, we just take each of those pieces and send them back to the start. So what we're doing is showing that with the, with the AIE workflow, you can have splitting content, you can have cycles, you can have zips of zips that come out and then get re reprocessed. You can have email that comes in with a list of attachments. The email goes through, is indexed, all the attachments are split out, and then process themselves. So one aspect of the workflow system that I haven't discussed yet is called SATA. SATA stands for Staged Event Driven Architecture. And this is a process where uh, each stage in a workflow is connected together through a queue, a bounded queue. And what this bounded queue does is lets you uh, restrain and contain the resources that are used by the system. So when uh, a component finishes processing a message in a workflow, instead of passing that message directly to the next stage in the workflow, it puts it on a queue. And the next stage in the workflow pulls messages off of that queue. And what this does by having that bounded queue is when the queue gets full, the stage previous to the queue gets blocked. It can't write to the queue anymore. 
and that means its input queue gets full, and so on. And this ends up pushing back on the, uh, the client system and tells it to slow down. And what this, this does is restrain the amount of resources that the system is using and gives us a natural way to tell clients to back off so that the system doesn't get overloaded. That's the basic concept with workflows and ingestion, but we also use workflows for query processing as well. So connectors, as I've talked about, can inject data into the system, but connectors are not just one way. Connectors can also take data input. And the way this works uh, in AIEs is with the system called alerts. So we can have a specialized component here, say alert processor, and what that component does is contain a series of queries that you may have constructed earlier in the system. Uh, say a query for detecting uh, social security numbers for HIPAA compliance. And when a document comes through the system, and say a social security number is contained in the document, we can generate an alert and send that back out, a trigger to insert content into a database, to send email to somebody, alerting them that uh, some document uh, containing private information is now in the system and perhaps searchable, and that type of thing. This is another advantage of the workflow system uh, and, and the way that uh, you can process content, trigger things off of processing content, have cycles, split, etc. So picking up from talking about uh, workflows for ingestion, we also use the workflow concept to support query. So say you've got your index, you've put in all your content here. Uh, we will also use a series of workflows for processing queries. So you've got your query client. So queries go through a pre-processing pipeline to uh, clean up the queries, identify uh, expand synonyms, etc., that type of thing. They go into the index, then the response comes out and is also processed by a series of stages. And then the answer goes back to the client. These stages on the, on the back end can be used for filtering out results, for doing security checks, uh, GIS checks, that kind of thing, um, or have your own custom piece of uh, query processing or post-processing code. But some of the power that we talked about before with cycles on the content side can also be used on the query side. And this can provide some very powerful features that exist in the engine without the client having to implement that logic. So for instance, say you put in a query and you're searching for something, but then uh, there's no results in the database for that. So we might have a stage here that checks to see that you have no results. And if there's no results in, your, uh, in the response to your query, it can go through to a different stage that can do some spell checking. So say you misspelled your query, it can do the spell checking and then automatically resubmit it for you into the query pipeline. So that'll go through. And if again you have no results, well then maybe this time it'll go through and say, well, maybe I should look for a synonym. And then resubmit that again. And again, if it goes through and there's no, uh, no results, you can do yet another path, et cetera, as needed to expand the query um, and provide any custom logic that's needed. And that concludes my talk about connectors and workflows, and thank you for listening.